Hey folks, this is Nate from Sparkbox, and today I want to talk to you about Houdini. My goal for this video is to teach you how to write a paint worklet, use some custom properties, and maybe just start exploring some of the power behind Houdini. Just a heads up, you will need to use Chrome to work through this tutorial, and uh, you'll want to go to Chrome Flags and search for the Experimental Web Platform features, and go ahead and just make sure you have that enabled. So before getting into any of the code, I actually just wanted to demo for you um, in the browser here. So uh, what you're looking at here are four divs, and they have sort of similar styles, but um, each of them are painting a series of dots, actually sort of a grid of dots to, uh, to their backgrounds. And you can see that they vary a little bit in style. And the thing that's kind of neat is the way that's happening is each div uh, uses this background image paint function. Paint is something new that is part of Houdini. It's one of the, the APIs that has recently landed in Chrome. The other part of this that's kind of neat is that they are each parameterized uh, with a few custom properties. And you could see as I come in here, if I, if I change circle spacing, I can space these things out. I can bring them closer together. I can make the circles really tiny. I can make them really big. Space that out a little more. Yeah, you get the idea. Okay, so first things first here, uh, let's look at the file structure. I just wanna go over the parts and pieces you will need to write your first paint worklet, um, starting with just an HTML file. This is just a standard HTML file. I have uh, my main style sheet linked. I have my main JS file included, and I have a div for our main content. This is where we will set the uh, background and use our paint worklet. So out of these, there's just one file we're missing. That's going to be our worklet file. So let's create that. And we are going to call this, let's call it dotsworklet.js. OK, so this will be our worklet file. Uh, we need a class. And we're going to call our class dots. This class is where everything will happen. And this is going to have two main uh, parts to it. The first part is it is going to have a static getter uh, called input properties okay and all this is going to do is it's going to return an array uh, of strings the strings will be identifiers for uh, the custom properties that we want to use in this worklet so uh, if you remember from the quick browser demo we had uh, circle color circle size and circle spacing so let's go ahead and add those So that's the first part of the worklet. The second part is aptly named paint. So this is the main method uh, that every time the paint cycle runs uh, for your worklet, it's going to call this method and it's going to pass this me method a few things. And those things will be context and that will be similar to a 2D canvas context. If you've worked with canvas, uh, that's what this is going to be. It's going to be the same API as your standard HTML canvas uh, geometry. We should call this probably geometry is just going to be uh, it's going to provide width and height for the element that you're painting to. And that will help you to do some things like setting sizing relative to the container and then properties themselves. And these properties will be a CSS style map, which will have whichever properties you specify here in your static input properties method, assuming you've set those up properly. Um, and we haven't, so we could probably put a console log in here and take a look at the properties that are coming through. There are a couple other things we need to do. The first is here in our worklet, we need to register, uh, register our actual paint worklet, the class dots. So we give this, we'll call register paint, which is just globally available within the worklet. Uh, and we'll give it an identifier. The identifier here, dots, this is uh, what we'll use to pass to the paint function in our actual CSS when we use this worklet. And we just need to tell it to use the dots class we just uh, declared. So that's it for the worklet right now. We need to jump to our main JS file and we need to actually load the worklet in. So the way we do that is we grab the global CSS object and there's a method called uh, paint worklet dot add module 
And then this will just be the path to the file, which we call dotsworklet.js. Should probably spell that correctly. Standard practice here is to do a very simple feature detection. Uh, we'll say, hey, if paint worklet exists in CSS, then go ahead and load it. Okay, so we're almost there. We almost have a loaded paint worklet. Uh, we've set up the worklet itself. We've pulled in the module. I don't see any errors over here in my console. I think that I'm on track. Um, so I'm going to look at my main CSS file. I want to go ahead and select that div that we had in our HTML. and It had a class uh, of pattern on it. And we're going to say uh, background image paint. And we'll pass that dots identifier that we used in our worklet. Okay, so now what we're going to have, what we should see is, oh, look, I have a style property map. And it says it has a size of three. And that, that sounds right because we said, hey, we want three properties to come through here. So uh, if you're wondering what the style property map is, it's basically a, just your standard JavaScript map. So if you want to get one of these properties from it, you just call .get um, and pass it the name of the property. So let's do that. We'll look at circle color and see what that is. Um, it's a CSS unparsed value, uh, which has a length of zero. So it's nothing. And that's because we haven't decided what circle color actually is yet. We could use a CSS variable uh, and declare it. We could just put it right here and call this um, pink. Let's see what we get logged out here. Okay, so we have uh, a CSS unparsed value still. I don't need quotes around this. That's silly. That's a keyword. Um, so what I'd like to see over here is that we have a CSS keyword value uh, because that's what pink is, but it's still unparsed. Um, and actually, if you look at it, there's, there's actually an extra space here at the beginning of it. That's super annoying. Um, so what can we do about this? How can we like tell our worklet what we want these things to do? And the answer to that is we can use uh, the properties and values API. So over here in our main file, let's, um, let's jump up here and let's call CSS.registerProperty. Okay, so this is another Houdini API right down here. This is the paint API. Um, and this is going to be the properties and values API. So when you call CSS register property, it takes an object uh, with a name. And we'll say circle color. Uh, and then a syntax. And the syntax here is really the important part, the most important part probably, uh, in that it allows me to tell the browser what I actually want this property to be. Um, it could be a length, it could be a percentage, it could be a color, it could be actually a whole list of things. Uh, let's see, there is also an initial value and for our case we'll just say uh, pink, why not, and then inherit. So some CSS properties inherit, some do not, as you know. So that's it. We've now registered a CSS property. I now have a CSS keyword value. Uh, it is pink and I don't have an extra space there. This is really nice. I now have some control, some sort of typing on the arguments that are being passed to my paint function when it's invoked. That's pretty neat. So same as the worklet, I think I want to throw a little feature detection on this just to be safe. Uh, we'll check for register property in CSS. Um, yeah, I think that's good. We still have two other properties that we need to take care of. We did um, circle color, but we also need circle spacing. And we're going to make this, I think we could either take a length. A length would be like a pixel value or an M value. Um, it's, a, it's a fixed length. And then there's percentage, so we can combine these with a vertical pipe. So this means that our syntax or our property value could be either a length or a percentage. 
Um, there's actually something that's even better called length percentage. So length percentage will allow us to define lengths or percentages, but will also allow us to do uh, to run like CSS calc uh, on combinations of those two values. So if you're going to possibly run CSS calc against those two types, this is the type you want to use. So we'll use that and we'll set that for the um, circle size as well. So our worklet is going to support fixed values as well as percentages. And I have an error. Oh, initial values are wrong, right? So let's just say 100 picks as a default. And those errors should go away. Okay, let's go back to our worklet. Let's just log all of these so we can take a look. Uh, cool. So we've got a keyword value for pink. We've got a unit value for our size and our spacing. Okay, so uh, let's get rid of these and let's start painting some stuff. Um, so context.beginPath will be how we start drawing. Context.arc will be how we uh, draw a circle. And then we'll do context.fill and that will ultimately fill uh, with whatever the fill color is. So we need to set the fill color. So let's do that. Context.fill style equals properties.get circle color. I think that'll do it. We have an error because arc requires five arguments and actually has an optional sixth. But um, yeah, five arguments to the arc function and we didn't fill that out so what are those they are x and a y and a radius and a start angle and an end angle so what does that mean okay well the x and the y are just going to center the circle and if you remember, we what, one thing we get in our paint arguments is a geometry object and that'll have the the x and or actually the width and the height, I should say, of the actual rectangle we're drawing to. Let's do these on separate lines just for clarity here. It's probably a little easier to read. So let's set the x to um, geometry dot width divided by two. And we'll do the same for y, except we'll use the height. Okay, so that's going to put the arc in the dead center. Um, radius, we can go ahead and use our, well, let's just, let's just start off by setting it ourselves. This is going to be a hundred. That should be a hundred pixels. And then the start angle and the end angle, the start angle is going to be some point around the arc from which to start drawing it. And the end angle is going to be where that drawing ends around the arc. Um, so you could do like a partial arc if you wanted to, we're going to do full circles. Um, so our start angle will be zero. And our end angle to get that is uh, math.pi times 2. Okay, so that should draw a 100 pixel circle right in the middle of the screen. It should be the color of our circle color property. Let's see what happens. There it is. Okay, cool. We have a circle and it should, should stay right in the middle no matter what I do. Color is a little off. Let's, uh, let's fix that color. Let's make that right. Okay, so I feel good about where this is headed. Um, we need to address the circle spacing property. Remember, these do have defaults, so even if we if we didn't set these, um, we'd still get something working in our paint worklet. But let's go ahead and let's just set them up here. Circle size and circle spacing. Let's make them both 50 pixels. Yeah, I think that'll work. And we'll jump back to our worklet and we can start using these. Okay, so let's see here. Let's get this, let's keep that up here. We're gonna declare some local variables and we need um, size equals uh, properties.get circle size. And we actually need the value from that. If you remember, 
um, <clears throat> there is a value and a unit coming through on those uh, properties. So we'll do the same for spacing. Um, and then we can drop in the size here. Now, one thing that actually needs to happen is we're drawing a radius, and we want the size to be the uh, actual uh, diameter of the circle. So we're going to have that size on the radius. And we should get a 50 pixel circle now. Great. Looks good. OK, now um, to start this grid, the first thing we need to do is probably just draw a row of circles. So we're going to use a while loop to do that. Um, we'll begin the path before the loop. We'll move this in here, and then we'll fill after. Um, the one change we will need to make to make this work is call uh, context.move to, and we'll set this to an x and y value. Uh, that way we can begin our path, we can draw a bunch of arcs, and then we can fill at the end, and that will be uh, a little more performant than just calling fill every time uh, we draw an arc. Um, so we actually need uh, we need an x and a y. We'll make those both zero. Um, and we're also going to need width and height. So I can just destructure those off of geometry. Okay, so let's use our x and y. Uh, x and y need to go here. And can probably pull this all up on one line now. Yeah, that's better. Um, and then we're going to need to check x is less than width. And we're going to update x. x plus equals uh, spacing for each run of the loop. And I should spell that correctly. I think that's good, let's see. Cool, we have a row of circles at the top. It looks like our spacing is 50 pixels and our sizing is 50 pixels, um, and that looks correct. Um, the one thing I don't like about this is uh, I don't have a, a last circle breaking off the screen, so let's, um, let's add here x is less than width plus uh, size. Cool. Okay, so we have one row of circles. Um, let's nest a while loop um, and paint these all the way down the screen. So here we're going to say, uh, well, y is less than height plus size plus size. Um, and then for each of those, we'll do a row. So um, one thing we'll need to do here is we're going to have to reset x. Right for each row, we're gonna increment x uh, equivalent to our spacing value. Draw an arc, do that until we exceed our uh, allotted width. Um, at which point, we'll jump down and uh, we'll need to reset x. And then y will just be um, the same as the x up in the nested loop there. Boom! Grid of circles. Great. Okay. Cool. I think we're getting close. Um, let's uh, check on our sizing and spacing and let's just like manipulate it a little bit so we can prove to ourselves that it's working. Great. Uh, and you can see if I size up these will, of course, they'll fill uh, as necessary. So that's good. Okay, so I want to put a little um, safety into this. We have these while loops and um, we probably need to guard against negative values or uh, values of zero for size and spacing, uh, we could end up in a place where we're just doing work for no reason and nothing paints to the screen, um, and we don't want to do extra work. Or we could end up with an infinite loop, and that is probably not good. So um, I'm going to do a couple things. Um, the first of which is I'm going to just go ahead and take the absolute value of both of those units so that if they're negative, they will return the positive version of them. So uh, we can say size equals math.abs size. Just reassign it to itself there. And same for spacing. Um, and then we want to check for zero. So uh, zero will be zero regardless of its absolute value. 
Um, so if the size equals zero, uh, let's just return early. And actually, let's move that up here before we do other things. Um, same for spacing. If spacing is zero, then we will have infinite loops, and we don't want that. Um, but if the size is zero, like nothing's going to paint any anyway. So like, why do any more work? So we'll return early if that is the case. Okay, with the guards in place, uh, at this point, all we really have to do is check um, check the percentage value. So we have percentage values. We want to change our math a little bit. Um, so I actually need to look at the unit from each of these. So I can do uh, size unit equals Uh, this and spacing unit equals properties that get spacing unit. Um, now this is getting a little verbose here. Um, I feel like I should go ahead and destructure these off, which I can do. So I could say I want the value to be called size and I want the unit to be called size unit. this a little bigger so you could see it. Close my file explorer and yeah we'll do the same for spacing. Uh, value as spacing, unit as spacing unit, and then I don't need the value down here. This line can go away and that's a little cleaner I think still have our dots so that's good um, all that's left to do is really change uh, what the size and spacing are based on their unit so uh, if size unit equals percent then size unit equals width divided by 100 or times 0 0.01 if you prefer uh, times size size actually this should be size um, and then we can do the same thing for uh, spacing okay so we've reloaded uh, it looks like everything is still working over here uh, let's jump to our CSS and use some percentages and see what happens. So let's do 10% uh, and 10%. I think that'll be nice and easy to take a look at and see if we got right. And that does appear to be correct. Uh, so I think that works and I'm happy with that. And just as an added bonus, uh, you can actually animate custom properties. So we can put a transition on this and let's do uh, let's transition circle size and then we can do pattern hover uh, circle size 2% and this will probably look ridiculous. Um, that's not really the point. So there you have it, a basic paint worklet using custom properties. Uh, keep in mind this is very new stuff and not something we'll be using in any production sites too soon. Um, and also don't consider this example too seriously. Uh, my hope is that you will take away from this that there's a lot of power in the Houdini APIs. Uh, there's a lot of granularity, flexibility, um, and they're performance minded. And that's really, really great thing for the future of the web. And hey, thanks for watching.